Lily and you're watching the Corvette channel. Don't forget to hit subscribe. Hi everybody, welcome to the channel. Today, Dan and I are gonna be changing the fender on his C5 Corvette. He got a, a crack in it over here and we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna change the whole fender because it's just much easier. He was able to find an exact match on the fender and the color. So instead of having to send it to the, the paint shop and have it redone, we could just take this one off and put the other one on. Now, I did a little bit of research. Dan and I actually both did a little bit of research on this. And there's really not any videos out on YouTube on how to take one of these fenders off. It's really surprising. I mean, we both looked for a half an hour. We found like one file that just kind of talks about it and shows a little bit after the guy has already removed it and then he just kind of sets it back in place. But nobody covers how to take this fender off. So um, hopefully you find this video informative. So to start off with, we have to take the uh, wheel liner out and all we're gonna do, there's a couple seven millimeter uh, screws that we need to pull out. Uh, one located here, one located up here, one located here, one located back further here, one up here by the A-arm, and another one up front. And as soon as we get those out, we should be able to pull the fender liner straight out. So now you're pulling these out so we can get to the bottom bolts that hold the fender onto the back bumper, right? That's correct. There are a couple screws back here, like right here, right here, that we need to get at. Okay. And so that's where we're pulling the fender line around. All right. And then we also have a couple up on the top side of the fender over here, too, but we'll have to get those from the taillight assembly, right? Correct. Guys, hopefully we're getting this. We're trying with three different cameras. It's a very tight squeeze in here. So we're really trying to, to get this for you. Um, get it documented as best as we possibly can. So if we, if you see the back of our head or the back of our shoulder for a second, it's not because we were trying to. We were just trying to, trying to get the right angle here. in this is we need to take just one headlight out and that's just Wait, you mean your tail light or, <laughs> yeah <a> tail light. <laughs> yeah so it's just two t15 screws to hold the tail light in should have a couple couple screws over here right yeah so we have Oops, sorry okay so right up here let's see if I can get the camera in there so you can see it Go ahead and basically you it is right oh it's right up in the top side okay, yeah I can it's see it. very up at the top okay right here's one okay and then the second one is right here and flash your light there you go. Okay, great. Okay, so these screws here, these are eight millimeter screws. You want to deep socket so that your ratchet handle isn't hitting anything, but 
you don't want to have a extension on there because then you're going to be hitting into the, uh, the taillight housing. Yeah. Got those two out. Okay, so now this should be good there. So we've got the back bumper separated or unscrewed from the fender, the back side of the fender. So now we've got the gas door that we've got to remove still, and the top screws that are right up here along the top of the fender. Okay, so now we've got the fuel door open. Um, there's six screws that are very obvious that need to come off. But there's a tricky seventh one. And if you look right in here, you can see it down there. That's seven millimeter. All these screws are seven millimeter. Okay. Uh, that are around the gas door. So that's uh, our next step on this. Yeah, now this screw here is at a very weird angle to get to. Now Dan does things the same way I do. That's why we work really well together is that we don't like using power tools uh, when we're doing this because um, you're, you're dealing with a metal screw into a nylon or plastic and you're just going to strip it out. So it's just, uh, it's just much better to take your time and uh, do this. Now you probably most likely what I'll do for editing here is I will either have already or I will in, in the later part of this video, we'll fast forward this so you're not having to look at him ratcheting constantly, but we highly advise that you do this with manual tools. All right, so now that we have those seven screws out, now we are... Uh... All, right. All right, so now we've got these screws here that need to come off. Okay. And then there are one, two, there are three screws here that need to come off. Okay. And then our fender should be free. All right, so next we've got the T15s all along here and then down the door. come apart right there boy. Yep. So what we need to do is we need to pull the fender out just a little bit. And I've got the gas door here. So then we're gonna slide the fender forward. There we go. Okay. Looks like so. And that's what a Corvette looks like without a fender. So, okay, so for reassembly, what we've done, we've taken the gas cap off because that's the only thing that was really holding that gas door in there and having it flop around. Just kind of sets right back in place, guys. Um, you have your, none of those nuts that you took off, those, you have to slide the fender back into that, back here. Okay. And then there's a, bracket right here but you need to get the bottom of the fender underneath it okay so, so you're kind of walking it down there we go Just like so So what I did, and what actually worked out pretty good, is taking my hand in through the tail opening, I was able to manipulate screws. And that's how I'm manipulating the bumper to line up with the fender. Okay. All right, so the next step is gonna be putting the gas door back on before I do that, I'm just going to put a couple screws in just to keep the fender in place so it doesn't really have a chance to move around too much. 
and I'm not going to really tighten them down much. These are strictly just to hold center in place. So just All right, so if you remember, there was that one seven millimeter nut that was a pain in the neck to get to. That's actually the hole that it's going through. So now you can see why it's at such a difficult angle to get to. Right. Pulling it out. That looks uh, pretty well lined up like to me. Up town. Okay, so now. All right, now the next step is going to be putting in all of our all the rest of our torque screws. Okay. Put these ones in the door first. Is that what you're doing? Yep. Okay. Now what I'm doing on these screws here. I'm just putting them in, not even snug. I'm keeping them loose, just so in case we need to move the fender around a little bit, we have room to do that. At this point, we've got the top screws of the where the uh, the trunk and the fender meet. Those are all in, and Dan's just putting the last three screws into the door jam here. So at that point, all we'll have left is just putting the uh, the screws and a couple of the nuts back on the studs on the back where the fender meets the bumper, and put the tail light back on, and put the put the wheel liner back in. And we'll be gone. We'll be done. So very, very, getting very, very close. Okay, the next step is going to be getting these two screws lined up and getting the fender completely lined up. Again, guys, apologize for not being able to really show you a lot there, but you can see he's got both hands and, and I'm holding this flashlight, so there's not a whole heck of a lot of room there. <laughs> All right, so now that we've got the cheese screws in up here, we still have the cheese screws that go on this bracket and the two nuts back here. Sorry, my head's gonna be in the way. It's okay. So the next step is the uh, fender liner. And that, the front end cuts in here. So it's tucking into the front of the fender, into the front of the lip of the fender, right? There you go. Yep. And you'll see when it actually pops into place there. Okay. And the rear is going to tuck into the back of the fender and the bumper. And there we go. Just like that. Put all, the, all of our screws back into the, the fender well. And then put the tail light in. And we're good. All right, now one thing I didn't show in there was putting the... Uh, 
light bulb back in here. If you did forget to do it while you had the fender line around, you can always reach in right here and hook it back up. If you need to change the light bulb, this is the best way. Just pull the two screws out, pull the headlight or tail light out, and then you can reach right in there to replace the uh, light bulb for that marker light. Tail light back in. Now, one thing I would like to point out is if you are doing like I did and getting um, a fender from someone who's salvaging their vehicle, if you have a coupe, you can only get a fender from a coupe. If you have a Z06 or a convertible, you can only get a fender from a Z06 or a convertible. Um, between the coupe and the convertible, they are not interchangeable, only because of where the top is on a convertible and the coupe. Right. Convertible popping up here, having that extra piece that runs across the top, obviously the coupe does not have that. Okay. So that's just one thing to keep in mind. Also, if you're doing a wide body, make sure you order for a coupe or a convertible or a Z06, whichever you have. Right. So now we've got the tail light in, and the last, the second to last step, put the tire on, and then clean up all your tools. So guys, hopefully you found this video informative, and that it helped you. Trying to find a C5 video was impossible for us, so hopefully this helps. This will probably be one of the only ones on the internet. So. Um, as you saw, it's really not that hard. It's a little cumbersome to get in some of the spots, but besides that, just take your time um, and you'll be able to get it. So hopefully it helped. You guys have a great night. Hi everyone, I'm Jennifer. Thanks for watching the Corvette channel. Don't forget to hit subscribe.